the star of FX's Justified City Primeval. He is back as Raylan Givens, which is a gift to anybody who knows Justified or Leonard Elmore or Elmore Leonard or and all of that stuff. We are so excited to have here on the Rich Eisen Show, Timothy Oliphant back here on the show. How are you doing, Timothy? Uh, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me. I'm telling and, you As soon something... as you start talking, I'm reminded just how smooth and easy you make it all look. Well, you know what? I, I, <laughs> it just makes it smooth. Although I just yeah. called one of the greatest uh, uh, sure. authors in the history of authoring. Uh, well, Len Elmore is a great uh, announcer and of basketball course. player. Yeah, uh, but anyway, long story Did you short. Up? Did I miss it? No, I, you know you what? I, did, I should have just let it go. By the way, technically, yes, uh, yes. elephant. Is it, did I really? I'm on a run right now where I've decided I'm going to just. I, I feel like I've years I've let it slide, and I, I've created a problem. Okay. My, my dad gets offended. My dad gets upset. What does your dad get upset about? Well, when he hears uh, Oliphant. Oliphant. Okay. He, by the way, when I say he hears it, I like he hears it from my children <laughs> when they say their names Oliphant, and he goes, "What?" And he goes, it's Oliphant. And then he looks at me and says, Tim, what are you doing? I said, let them say it how they want. So, this, so you've been on this show. Hold on a second. You've yeah. been on this show multiple times. You were on and, our and, podcast and, so long ago that that's what the, I mean, predated this show. 12 yeah. years you've been doing it. As a, as a show, matter of yeah. fact, you set the record for most curse words in the I'm history of, of that, I'm proud uh, of of that broadcast. And I've been you know mispronouncing your last name the entire time. Well, saying? I only noticed it now. So it's... Oliphant. Oliphant. Like yes, I, elephant, but oliphant. That's exactly right. Okay. Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant here on the Rich Eisen right. Show. It's a mouthful. I don't expect no, you to say No, it's great. It. No, this, and by the way, just drop the Timothy. Just go with Tim. And maybe it makes it easier. Tim Oliphant. We're not that close. Go back to Timothy. <laughs> I just walked right into that. Fantastic. You know, Roland Givens is back. You know I've had. Or is it really moment. Givens? Is it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me correct you. And uh, Givens. I've had this mug in my. Uh, I've sent you a photograph. Did I? Yeah, I sent yeah, you a photograph yeah. of this mug in, in on my desk with yeah. it holds pencils. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, now take we, this we, one. We do go way back. Go now you get like a car go seat. <laughs> you know what? Just just say, buddy. My bud. Just say, yeah. Tim Oliphant. Just say, let me ask here you. Here on the Rich Eisen Show. Can I ask show. you something, buddy? You know, so, <laughs> pal. Sport. When you get to the show. And by the way. Yes, sir. The, the, uh, we're going to talk justified. because that. Of course. But I uh, also want to say, because this feels right up your alley. Okay. And, and forgive me, I'm, I'm self-promoting here. Please. But uh, there's a Soderbergh thing coming out. I know, out, yeah. And that is also. I'm, I, and I'm not taking uh Credit for this. Yes. It's certainly not full responsibility, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm going to be two for two on these. I bet you will. They're sweet. Full circle. Full circle. How about that? See, that's the name of the show that's coming on Max. And by the way, uh, because I don't know him very well, I would call it HBO Max, but I know it's not Max now. Yeah, he can't be expected See, this to whole keep thing, up. I can't keep up. <laughs> and Steven Soderbergh is the director of that one. I just heard of, there's a, something called Roku. Sir, <laughs> see it on speaking, your desk there, and I figure of, it must be a thing. Speaking of insanely um, popular and successful Academy Award-winning directors that you have worked with, is it true, Tim, that we can? Because I've been telling you, I'd love to see more Raylan Givens. I'd love to see more Raylan Givens. That we can no, credit he, Quentin Tarantino well, for this, or what? Here, what do we got? He and I uh, had a conversation about this. Um, on the sense on the set of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. And yes, it still gives me a little tingle just to talk like that's my part of my life. Yes, yeah, it's it is. It's still just uh, pretty cool. Uh, I've had it pretty good. Um, stick around long enough, they say. Uh, and where I said, hey, let me ask you something. Uh, I have this idea because we've been talking about bringing the show back, but we need the the, the something to jumpstart it, you know, something to give us a get it going. Mm -hmm. And I said, what if we took uh, we took this Elmore Leonard book, City Primeval, mm -hmm. and just stripped it for parts and and turned it into a Raylan story? And he thought that was a great idea, and that's that that helped. So you put some wind in our sails. You had the 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 seeds of the idea. Or you were the one who was coming up with the idea. Like you had this book. You saw let's the book. Say, let's just say it was your, to your audience, it was all me. It was all my it. idea. <laughs> and Quentin Tarantino, when he's like. Not exactly. But and so when was, Quentin's like. We, the writers, we had been talking, the guys from the show. We, we've always stayed in touch. We've always talked about wanting to bring it back. Yes. Um, I love those guys. I love that collaboration. They mean the world. And we were just looking for, we were looking for that idea to get it, get it started. Yes. And 
And I brought that idea up to Quentin. I mean, I'm there on the set. I'm not going to waste him an opportunity here to pick his brain. Yes. And um, I knew he knew the show. He was a fan of the show. Um, and he was a huge Elmore Leonard fan. He's adapted him himself. Yes. Amazingly so with Jackie Brown. And what I didn't know is that he was going to, at one point, make City Primeval the, a film. And he's, so he loves, really? he loves the book. And he was very enthusiastic. And at one point, was going to direct two of our episodes, yeah. And what happened? There was a, it was an unfortunate thing where he just, well, uh, he went and had a kid. And uh, yeah, well, he got in the way. The kids will screw it and up. That's what they do. <laughs> People say they change your life. And it, that's really code for they get in the way. <laughs> Father of the year, Tim Oliphant. Well, Oliphant. congratulations no, on you. Be best dad ever. Best dad ever. Nine years running. <laughs> And I, have a, and I have a 14 year old that's sad uh, right well, here on the Rich Eisen while. Show. You know, you well, I, got this, I got this for a few years ago. Yeah, working, working out the kinks. the kinks. Working out the kinks. So, what was it like for you to put the, the hat back on for the first time and look in the mirror and see, okay, there's well, a really good cool thing about there. aging, it doesn't affect hat size. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it doesn't throw, affect you know, hats. You know, you got to put the hat back on, otherwise people won't know what the show is. So, uh, see, <laughs> there it is. There you go. You put the hat back on, and they're like, "Oh, there it is. Same old, same now, old." Now, is it one of the, Is it like a, an athlete putting on eye black, where you, like you get in a mindset before you walk out on the stage there, and you put it's the hat exactly on? Exactly like that. <laughs> Superman's <laughs> cape. It's got to be something yeah, similar. It's felt so similar to my NFL days uh, <laughs> when I put on the. Well, you won't. You, yeah, you play like, tennis. You don't wear. Way, you don't. Yeah, no, I, I will throw on the zinc. Very similar. Very similar. <laughs> throw it on the zinc. <laughs> so very if, similar. If, I'm a big fan of the zinc. You did, know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And by the way, I'll go with colors. By the way, since you and I have last had a conversation, <laughs> yeah, on this show, and you poked merciless fun at me at the way I mimicked. I don't recall making that way. making a, a you know a, a, a tennis racket swing motion where I went <laughs> oh, like this right. and now, you said it's not like it's slamming a door. Okay. Well, it's still a little it's haunted not, by it. Exactly, it's not like <laughs> slamming a door, Rich. You know, you got to put spin on it. I have since taken many. You, you inspired me and? to take many lessons. Good for you. Um, I'm I'm okay at it. I can't take. I probably you'd still w probably kick my ass a little. Well, bit sure. Here. I think everyone expects that, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I think still though. But I I, I, I know what you mean. Oh, about, I see a little you know, brush. Oh, I, I got see the a brush. brush. I got brush. <laughs> I got brush. I got brush. You've got <laughs> you zinc it up. I got brush. I'll brush it up. You zinc it up. Uh -huh. I'll brush it up. We'll see what's on. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what's the backswing look like? Is it? Oh, gonna, I'm, let I'm, me I'm, see the back. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Here? Hold on. Up. Yeah, Whoa. One is of it one hander? Uh, no. <laughs> I, you, yeah, you know, yeah, I do the one hander. I do. Wait I do. I don't do the, this I don't do the two. This is pickleball. You're talking about uh, pickle. I am a pickle. Uh, I am a pickle guy. It's hard not to love it, right? Do you play? You want to hate it, but you. It's great. You're into it, right? I love it. Is it going to take off, though? Is it a spectator sport? No. No. I don't think so. Although, although I will although on occasion. I'm sure golf is a spectator sport, and yet there it is. I will on occasion <laughs> see. <laughs> I will see on occasion a point or, or two and sure. stop and watch and maybe get a pointer and not actually put it into practice when I actually play. Sure. But I do love it. It's yeah. great. So you play. How often do you play pickle? Not as often. No, not as often as uh, as tennis. Okay. Uh, still pretending my knees hurt, uh, don't hurt. Okay. And uh, but I do love the pickle. And if it was, uh, I do. I'll tell you this. I was for years like a lot of tennis players. Like, oh come on. Like if you found out a buddy was playing pickle and that's why he couldn't play tennis. And then I went out there. Mm -hmm. And and three hours later, I was in my backyard going, honey, I feel like we could fit a court. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it was so much fun. All right, do you want to tell him what you say then? Every single time pickleball's brought up? Go well, ahead, go ahead, go well, ahead. Well, Say it to my well, buddy Tim. Well, Tim, go ahead. I feel like we're friends. We go way back. We've sure. known you for a long time. You've sure, been coming Chris. on our shows. <laughs> um, how, how old are you again? No. <laughs> He's no year's age. Uh, According to Wikipedia, pickleball is 55, for 55, but people... I still don't think that's right. <laughs> okay. Can't it's confirm. The, it's for or people deny. of a certain age. Uh, oh. Uh, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. Yes. No, I, I was out there playing with uh, professional tennis players. Because Guys on the tour. Because it's a fad now. That's why. That's why they're into it. 
Mm. Well, this is uh, this is what uh, Chris, you're catching up to our conversation. I think it <laughs> I think it started out with that sort of. Well, I guess I asked if it was a spectator sport, right? Which yeah. is not. Uh, That's a different story. It's, though. So it's not. I'm not saying it's a fad. I don't think it's a fad. I think it's sticking around. It does so feel you, like it's cooled a little bit. No, it hasn't. Just because I have stopped talking about it. I think it's it got a lot going for it. It does. Taking up less space. Right. Everybody can play it. The entry level is good, but the people that are really good are. are really, it's pretty fun. So you played with people on a tour? Yeah, I played with like. Yeah, We're I've, I've had a in. chance to play with some really good some some ball players. Yeah, gonna, you're drop a name or what? Come on, Big Sam Query. I know that's going to impress. Yeah, no, yeah, the, Big the, Sam Query. By the way, yeah, I was out there playing. That was my first time ever playing. Uh, my Sam. Uh, Sam um, Another guy plays on the pickleball tour, former mm -hmm. college tennis player, mm -hmm. and then my daughter who played college tennis. And so I was, so I, I was players. there with three very good tennis players slash pickleball players. Yes. And um, it was a kick to play. And they were they were tagging the ball, and then t it was sweet. You had to learn like, how to dink it. And they know how to they dink it. You had to do it. The little, Peter, the little Peter Dinklage every now and then. Yeah, this, it's this, the sound I could do without. Yeah. But it's pretty fun. Okay. There's a sweat involved. It, it's totally, yeah. By the pay him no attention. Are you? You're just uh, you're a downer when it comes to pickle. Yes, he is. You're not alone, by the way. And then I challenged him, and he said, "I don't want to hurt my Achilles." The problem is, yeah. here's the problem: is oh, that God. I've really dug in on this stance, and I would feel like a pretty big hypocrite backpedaling. No, you wouldn't. Stop it. You can. No, still... you wouldn't be alone on that either. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be in a line. You'd be in a line. You know I, mean? I was that guy. Be. I was that guy. Yes. You, we'd be. You, we'd just be closer. And I, that is one of my goals in life, is to be closer to Tim. This is so. what we're doing here. And we're all a, just trying to come together. It'll be a great you know, finish figure it out. to Justified City Primeval, seeing Raylan Givens step in the kitchen, getting called for being in the kitchen. That'll be fantastic. Oh my God. He would not be happy if, with that. Oh. If you know what? If this show goes well, and now I'm, I'm, uh, there's a plea to the viewers and the listeners, um, hmm. watch the show, because uh, I've always wanted to do another one after this one. Um, and by the way, it's good. So I'm not I'm not trying to cheat you, but if we bring it back, yes. I feel like Raylan's going to be playing pickle. Yeah, that alone in the hat, obviously in the hat, of course. <laughs> I mean, you can't if you don't have the hat on. No one knows it's, it's a show. They're what, like, what, what is the show? The most important question since we're spitballing here and we're creating yeah, the second we're season that's what we're of doing. This is how Justified City Prime. This is Eagle. just like talking with Quentin on the set. <laughs> it premieres tomorrow. You at, and me with the pickleball exactly, idea. Exactly. At 10 p.m. Eastern. Put the in our sails. Exactly. And I don't allow cell phones on this set either. At 10 p.m. Eastern on FX. Uh, and you could watch it on Hulu the next day, which is available here on Roku. So, Hold on a second. We'll, we'll, okay. Sorry, I just want to <laughs> turn this off really quick. I don't want to... <laughs> I had forgotten. I had forgotten. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm very Tarantino-like <laughs> like that. Um, so uh, would, would Raylan zinc it up is the question. Does Raylan Givens zinc it up? Well, he's going to when he's playing pickle. Boy. For sure. I just love watching you kick ass and take names like this. Well, th and it's that's so what's going to be cool is to see him go from playing pickle to kicking ass. <laughs> and by the way, it's going to do a lot for pickle. I feel like I think I, that might bring you around when you see Raylan playing pickle I mean. and then kicking ass. Right. I like that he has shortened it like Tom Cruise. Like yes. it's not pickleball, it's pickle. Uh, it's what it's just stop talking. You just belie <laughs> your ignorance on the subject matter with each syllable you what utter Cruise, into the Retrieve Show what microphone. Did, well, I don't get the reference. No, it just he, he's Cruise just, shortens words like, oh, I'm not working on Mission Impossible. I'm working yes, on what Mission Rob Lowe told us that, mission. that that's he he learned from Tom Cruise yeah. the very badass way of talking about your filmography. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, for yeah, instance, yeah. you wouldn't have said, well, I was on the set of Once Upon a Time in no, Hollywood. No. You I was on the set of Hollywood. I was on the set of Hollywood. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I'm like. By the way, can we get back to Primeval? Yes, please. See what I did there? No, go. Let's do I it, shortened please. It. Shortened it. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> wow. By the way, and I also, I told you earlier, also check out Circle. Because Circle's... Uh, circle's full Circle. So, tell me, what, what is that circle. about with Soderbergh? What's that about? That is a, uh, uh, it's like a... Botch kidnapping mm -hmm. that just exposes everybody's dirty little secrets. It is so intense and so riveting. And the performances are so good. Claire then, Danes, course, Dennis Quaid, you. Yeah. And sort of, it's, he is the, one of the smartest people I've ever come across. He's, he's what they call a, a genius. I would agree. Yeah. Um, he just doesn't miss. So it's, a, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Riveting. Okay. Riveting. All right. And that's on Max, the uh, original limited series. Um, I've never asked you this, so I'm going to ask you, how did you get involved with Curb, your enthusiasm, and Larry David? 
and those episodes, which, by the way, you are brilliant in. Those are some funny, funny episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. that. I don't, I don't know how to do it any other way. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you only know one speed. I like it. I like it. You know what I mean? I'm like you. Yeah, I just, I just win. I just like complimenting <laughs> you. I'm just a, I'm uh, I just win. Look at my hair. Uh, how'd you, <laughs> no, I do appreciate that. How'd you get involved? It was so fun to be a part of that. Yeah. Oh my god, that's one of those jobs where uh, I'd, I'd pay to be there. Um, I mean, not really, but you know, I'm just that, you know what I mean? <laughs> the spirit of the uh, what I'm saying. In theory, yes. Um, I had done. I had uh, Jeff Schaefer, who uh, produces that show, yes. cre- you know, runs that show there with Mr. David. I had worked. I think this is how I got on there. Yeah. I'm not, but I had worked with. Uh, he had a show called. It's a sports show. The he league. Worked, there you go. Yes. And uh, I play. I was on the. I did an episode of the league. Okay. So that was the beginning of that relationship. And I think that's what might have something to do with it. I don't know. So I you just, never I met Larry call. David before getting on the set with him? No, never. What was that like? Oh, what a joy. I had not usually with most people that I am uh, obsessed with and and, because that's a show. I'm not a big TV show guy. I actually don't like a lot of TV, but Mm -hmm. I will watch Curb till, you know, yeah, till they till they quit. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not know he was such a, a, a generous laugher. I didn't know he was. He just laughs. And uh, it was a ball. uh, And I'm guilty of that, too. Okay, I'll crack up in the middle. I'm. Pretty easy to crack up on a set, right? So just laughing with him, uh, and the way they shoot that is so fun. I and mean, they're getting away with murder. It's yeah. just it's so fun. So did you ad lib many of your lines? Or I mean, basically the I don't want to go too in the weeds, but you know they right. they don't have a script per se. They just have an outline, right? So for my episode, for example, they would have a scene where it just says, you know, Larry's going to come to your room. Uh, he needs a toothbrush. <laughs> he, you have an extra toothbrush, but you won't give it to him. Right. (laughs) That's and uh, because that's your toothbrush and he's having to, you know, so you you arrive on set and they've they kind of just huddle up and we (laughs) read that. That's the scene. And then they say, okay, let's go. And the first take might be 15 minutes and maybe, you know, a minute of it's usable. Um, And you just kind of begin to shape it. Yes. Um, And, you know, the one piece of advice I had gotten or I. I tend to listen to is, you know, don't try to be funny. And when in doubt, just repeat what the other person says. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, cut to, you know, seconds after that, you know, here he knocks on the door, cameras are rolling and he's like, uh, you know, I need to, you got an extra toothbrush. And I said, yeah, I got one. He's like, oh, great. I need it. And I was like, oh, you can't have it. You know? And then he's like, (laughs) he's like, what are you talking about? And you're just going, and then it's slowly, he's like, okay, next take. Uh, here's what we liked. That's funny. Let's do more of that. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden it starts becoming a toothbrush emergency. And then I'm talking about, but that's your toothbrush emergency. That's not my toothbrush emergency. <laughs> and all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, this is the show. We're, we just sort of stumbled <laughs> in. This is the show. And I said to him, how do you get one of these? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been memorizing lines my whole life. What do you say? I mean, what an idiot. Seinfeld? Is that what he said? Just do Seinfeld? Yeah, <laughs> I just said, much? yeah. So, you know, listen, I, I, uh, I, my character's not dead, if they're listening. I, I had a ball on there. Uh, that it was, was a, fun. That was a funny episode with the Toblerone and the weights no, I mean, and the whatever. The whole thing was amazing. You know? I and, started to slouch, but I didn't want Chris to have to come over and adjust my camera. Uh, understood. Look at you. Can Let's you, start, look, can you just get over here? Can you, oh my can you just hustle over here? Yeah. All right. Tim, well, you know, I just uh, finished Daisy Jones in the Six. And oh. I, I, I love everything you're in, man, like li- literally. But I really, how was it working on that? I had a ball on that thing. Um, well, I'm sorry, I went back. I went back <laughs> <on>. <laughs> now, go back to your seat. He's just baiting you. You guys are really. Uh, well, we're into it. You guys have really cut down here at the staff. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. I had a ball doing that thing. Um, uh, the guys that uh, created that show uh, was Scott at Newstedler, and um, no one wants to know the director's name, but he's a wonderful director. But uh, I had known them for a while, and they gave me a shout uh, about that uh, about that character. I love that genre. I love those, um, and we we just had a good time, you know. Seventies rock uh, was really cool. What time. a wonderful cast! What a lovely group of people! It was it was uh, it was fun to okay. fun to hang out with those. Those folks. What's your favorite Deadwood? James Ponsalt was a was the director's What's name. What's your favorite Deadwood story? 
Give me one. Favorite Deadwood story? Yes, from the entirety of it all. What do you want? I told I you know. the one about uh, killing the kid. Can I? Is that what, fair to that talk again? about at this point? What is it again? <laughs> it's a <laughs> milk story. It's the first one that came to mind. Ah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying this is... <laughs> all I know... I'm, no, I'm, I'm having second thoughts, but I'm still going to commit to some part of the story. Very well. There was a character on the show... Perhaps it was a young character. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was some brouhaha going on that uh, somebody connected to that. Uh, that actor was being a pain in the ass. And um, there was some there was some drama behind the scenes. That's and, odd for David Milch production. <laughs> so good. <laughs> OK, so there's this kid and uh, there's some brouhaha going on that didn't sit well with Milch. And, yeah, you know, I tend to stay out of those things. So I didn't know much about what was going on. Yes. But within just an hour or two, there was a knock on my trailer door, and, and Milch is there. And um, unusually, we, we tend to just talk it on the set or mm -hmm. talk at lunch. So the fact he's at my trailer, I said, you know, what's going on? He said, uh, <laughs> we're going to kill the kid. <laughs> 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 that was a solve to whatever was happening behind the scenes. I'm not sure. It wasn't the first time that was a solve, by the way. There was some other there was we had we had other there was there was another character at one point that was a bit of an issue with scheduling and mm -hmm. uh, he didn't live he didn't live long either. <laughs> but what's amazing about that this story is if I may, the creativity of that man, mm -hmm. because that happened. Uh, he, he said to me, he goes, look, uh, he immediately, he's no dummy. He knows that uh, underneath just a neurotic actor. He said uh, right after he said, I'm going to kill the kid. He said, um, it's going to be wonderful for you. It's going <laughs> to it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's a wonderful storyline. Like, it's going to be great. Um, and he, we had this whole, I mean, you, you know the show. Yeah. There was a kid that died, and it was a tragic event. The whole town witnessed it. Yeah. Um, me sitting over the kids while he's still uh, with us, and um, he, his, his real father was my character's brother. I was raising my older brother's child. Yes. He's talking to me as if I'm... He thinks I'm uh, his real father. Um, it was uh, the it was bullets go so into crushing. The watching bullets this. go into mourning, and the town is in dis it needs, and they don't know when it's right to la uh, go get Bullock. And Swearingen's got to come to our house, and he comes through the front door right. for the first time, and we sit in my home. All these amazing. He so my, he wasn't wrong. It was incredible drama. It took up a, the bulk of that season. And it was born out of... And I was like, what the fuck was this show going to be about? <laughs> I mean, they're historical figures. He has no problem yeah. taking creative license. Sure. I mean, it's... it's we never... I mean, the season we were going to do... The guy was amazing. You know, you know um, that... Uh, Mrs. Bullock. Yes. When I got the job, I was told uh, she, her character would arrive that uh, like at the um, sometime in the first season, mm -hmm. and she would show up with the kids, and you'd be. And then it was like, well, it's going to be the final episode. Then he came up to me. He said, at the the final episode, your wife shows up, and then and then he said next year, and so. You know, he, he was just, he was so willing to just go with like, no, th th what's happening here is really interesting. There's more here to dig into. And Played just a willingness to zig and zag and know that he still had history on his side. We were, had a self-contained set. It was a perfect storm of madness and creative genius. And somehow it all worked. It was amazing. Well, I mean, it was something to be around. Yeah, played by uh, it was a good Anna, one, huh? play, unbelievable. Played by Anna Gunn, who many people know as Mrs. Walter White. Scott Anna Arroyd. Gunn, yes, the lovely, the talented, just a, what a wonderful cast. woman. Uh, she thought she was showing up season early season one, then not till end of season one, and then you know, hang on, we'll have you next year. And then 
you know, you'll be part of an incredible plot twist based on the fact that somebody was, was painting the ass off camera. <laughs> <laughs> and David Milch is like... Somebody <laughs> connected. I'm not naming who was a connect, whatever. And look, oh, now, keep in mind, that may not have even been the real truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, even for David... Like, I don't know if that's what's real. That's true. I got you. You know what I mean? Like, he is, he was, uh, I don't know what's real. He might have had that plan all along, and he was looking for the nudge. I don't know. He right. might have had it. You, you don't know. I just know that that's my experience. I bet. <laughs> and that was weekly. Kid should never have given him show. that bad tip of the fifth race at Santa Anita. Amazing. It should never have happened. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Tim, thank you for coming on. Uh, it is always great having you here. It's, it's a pleasure. A always, it's always a pleasure blast. to be here, and I, I appreciate you thank guys. You thank you very much. Uh, watch Justified City Primeval on FX. It premieres tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern on, on Hulu the next day, available right here on the Roku platform. And uh, everyone should watch it so we can watch Raylan Givens play pickleball in the second season of this <laughs> terrific show. Tim, Oliphant. Oliphant? No, no uh, it's an all. Did I say it's N-A-L-L? Oliphant. I don't want to drag out the end clothes oh here. That was goodness. such a lovely I'm close. Just, uh, now it's going to be back to this. <laughs> Oliphant. We'll be right back here <laughs> on the Dick Eisen Show, right here <laughs> on the Rocket Channel. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.